Hi guys, welcome back. So this is part two of the feedback mechanisms topic in which part one was already uploaded a week ago. So um, I hope you did watch uh, that video and then I hope you learned something. But anyways, we were able to meet naman no, during our synchronous lessons and I hope I was able to answer your questions, your queries and um, all parts yung asa confusing para sa inyo. So anyways, uh, para di na mo maglisod, I will be linking down below um, part one ng video so that sa kato mga wala pa nakakita, you can uh, watch it continuously uh, with this uh, part 2 na video. Okay? So, let's begin. So, last time, no, we focused more about, we focused more, we focused on, or we focused more about uh, um, the stimulus response feedback model and then we uh, even talked about homeostasis and then uh, the two types of feedback mechanisms, that's a positive and negative feedback. So for this specific video lecture, we are going to learn no, in details on how does the body um, regulate particular processes, mechanisms, and, uh, you know, like systems inside our body. And uh, what does the body do if na ay mga changes no, na gakahitabo? Okay, whether na ay mga disruptions or, you know, mga imbalances that happen inside our body. So there are, uh, there are five um, we are going to learn on how the body regulates but on how the body regulates temperature, gas concentration, blood pressure, um, bodily fluids, and then uh, glucose concentration. Okay, so let's start first with regulation of body temperature. Now, we all know that the normal human body temperature is about 36 to 37 degrees Celsius, diba? So, uh, it says here, you know, that the body needs to maintain a relatively constant internal temperature for metabolic processes to proceed efficiently. Kung binisay, un pa na siya, ang body or ang lawas, <laughs> binisay niya body, I mean, ang lawas, naan na siya gina-require nga sakto nga internal temperature para tanan nga mga processes nga gakaitabo sa lawas kay makaproceed or would take place effectively and efficiently. Okay? So, if na mga gamay nga changes na madetect ang lawas nga, uy, dili lagi ni mao nga body temperature nga itong gina-require. So, there would be some disruptions or imbalances na mahitabo sa inyong lawas. For example, uh, na gina require ang lawas no nga kanang kuanta ng sakto nga temperature for fertilization process to occur or you know for uh, you know what fertilization is right the union of the sperm and the egg um na gina require nga temperature para effective ang digestion na gina require nga temperature para effective ang pagdistribute og mga nutrients and gases all throughout your body okay so mo na siya kibali gamay lang nga changes sa uh, you know, sa internal body temperature, dali na kayo na siya ma-detect sa lawas. So, it would cause disruptions, inter uh, disruptions rather, uh, you know, imbalances inside our body systems. Okay? So, why do you think, no, nga, for example, um, during this um, coronavirus pandemic, no, uh, why do you think nga one of the protocols that was mandated by the government is to check uh, the temperature, body temperature of uh customers that get inside establishments and malls, di ba? Okay. It ma-detect sa thermal scanner na ang body temperature sa isa ka-individual is higher than the normal body temperature. Of course, it would mean na he or she might be showing the symptoms of the virus, di ba? So, pasap ka na palang class, murag mailan na ninyo nga changes pa lang sa body temperature, you would automatically know nga there is really something going on inside your body. So, murag, ang logic lang gidani kay, if there is something going on inside your body that is not, uh, yeah, if there is something going on inside your body and then mo manifest din siya through symptoms, pasabot ka na, there is, um, you know, there's really going on. Kibali, you have to pay attention to that. You have to take note na, uy, dili naman siya normal nga gakahitabo. So, you have to take action with that. Okay? Now, if the internal body temperature changes, your body will find ways to maintain its temperature. So, I will be um, showing here two scenarios on what the body does if ma-detect niya nga uh, body temperature is higher than the normal or the body temperature is lower than the normal body temperature. So, now, let's get into the fun part. How does the body maintain internal temperature? So, let's start with high temperatures, no? It causes imbalance in the body since it uh, makes the blood warmer compared to the hypothalamic set point. Now, if you could remember your grade school, uh, sorry, if you could remember your grade school science, no? Uh, one, uh, 
to sa parts of the brain specifically. Is it grade school or junior high school? But anyway, uh, nine parts of brain we call this the hypothalamus. Uh, uh, in the in the specific part of the hypothalamus, the, there is what we call the hypothalamic set point. It actually, gito uh, siya na set point. Kaya man nating determine if uh, the body temperature inside the body is stable. Okay, so if ma detect sa lawas na, wait, the body temperature is higher than the normal. Of course, the hypothalamic set point will send signals to the brain to do a particular response for this ano for this uh, imbalance nagakaita po. Okay? Now, uh, this is uh, the brain here and then if you could see in this uh, tiny purple part, I'm trying to point it using my cursor. So that's the hypothalamus. And these are the specific functions of the hypothalamus. Okay? So first and foremost, it controls body temperature. So aside from that, it also controls hunger, important aspects of parenting and attachment behaviors. It controls thirst and fatigue. Uh, also, we will be talking, we will be going back to hypothalamus because actually um, especially sa kuan or regulation of body fluids, kay, uh, the hypothalamus actually is stimulates your drinking behavior if ma feel sa lawas na kulang mo water. Okay? If your water concentration is decreasing. And then, uh, it also controls sleep and circadian uh, rhythms. So, more importantly, we are going to focus on how the hypothalamus controls body temperature. Okay, during high temperatures, kibali, if ma detect sa lawas that the, the body temperature is higher than the normal. Okay, so there is this part in the hypothalamus, it's called the heat loss center. It is being activated, okay? Ngayon kitawag siya nga heat loss center, tapos gaka-activate siya. Kaya nga itong mga target, ani guys, is to release the excess heat nga naa sa atong lawas. Okay, para makabalik ta sa atong normal body temperature. Okay, now, how does the body do that? Okay, so as soon as the heat loss center in your hypothalamus is being activated, your sweat glands will secrete or release sweat. Okay? So, as soon as your uh, body starts to release sweat, uh, this body sweat will be vaporized, causing your internal body temperature to lower down. Okay? So, another thing that the body does para ma-release niya ang excess heat sa imong lawas is that your blood vessels will become dilated. Okay? When you say dilated, vocabulary check. Okay? When you say dilated, murag mo expand. Okay? Kibali mo daku ang opening sa ibang mga veins, mga blood vessels, mga arteries, capillaries. Okay? So, what will happen if expanded ang imo or dilated ang imo mga ugat, ang mga blood vessels? Of course, your blood vessels will be filled with, uh, uh, will be filled with uh, warm blood. Okay? So, your capillaries become flushed with warm blood. So, take note, mas paspas manggod ang flow sa dugo, mas dali gaka-release ang heat, excess heat nga naa sa dugo. So, kanisya nga heat will then be radiated from the surface of the skin. Okay? So, that's how the body does it specifically. So, as soon as the heat is being radiated, um, you know, continuously, pasabutan na ang excess heat nga naa sa imong blood is being released outside your body. Until such time, ma-achieve na niya ang uh, normal nga internal body temperature. Okay? So, di ba, ganina kay taas man ang imong body temperature compared to the normal one. Again, the target here is to lose excess heat from the body. Okay? So, as soon as ma-release ng excess heat from the body, hinahinay na dahil naka-lower down ang imong body temperature into the normal body temperature, which is 36-37 degrees Celsius. Okay? okay? So, once your body temperature decreases, heat loss center is then deactivated. Okay? Human naman, we, are, we, are, we have already achieved balance naman. So, did, uh, hmm. this heat loss mechanism protects the body from high temperature. Okay? Now, what happens during lower temperatures? Okay? What if the body detects that your internal body temperature is lower than the normal? So, kung ganina, natin gitawag ng heat loss center, karo na na po tayo gitawag ng heat promoting center, still in the hypothalamus, and then it is being activated. So, nga nung gitawag siya ng heat promoting center, kaya ang atong target karo is to promote or to deliver heat to the different parts of your body as much as possible. Okay? So, how does the body do that? Uh, skeletal muscles start to shiver and blood vessels become small. Diba ka, bantay mo class na usually pag tugnawan mo kay, eh, na may naitan yun siya mag-shiver mo, no? You know, just shiver. Lahi ang seizures, ha? 
uh, magshiverbo. And then, uh, that's actually because your muscles are trying to rub off from each other to generate heat, okay? Your muscles generate heat by shivering. And then, aside from that, your blood vessels would constrict. Okay, what do you mean by constrict? Vocabulary check, okay? Mugamay or monaro ang opening. Now, what happens if ang imo mga ugat kay mugamay ang iyang opening or monaro siya or mo-constrict? Okay, di ba? Muhinay ang flow sa blood. Okay? So, that makes sense. Uh, take note, dili siya in a delikado nga manner. Ha? Again, this is the normal response of the body. Okay, para makabalik na sa balance na itong ginatry yung achieve. Okay? So, as soon as the blood vessels constrict, of course, ang flow sa blood kay muhinay. Take note, baya class, kung mas Kung mas paspas ba ya ang flow sa blood, kaya mas paspas ba ya ang pag-radiate sa heat o pag-release sa heat. This time, we cannot afford to uh, lose heat. Kay kaninga heat, kay kinanglan man nato inside the body. Okay, dili na to siya pwede kalas-kalasa, dili na to siya pwede i-release sa gawas. Kay we need this heat as much as possible. Kay ato man niya siyang gamiton to, dis to be distributed to the different parts of the body. Hence, there is um, a decrease in the blood flow. Okay, buhinay ang blood flow. So, and then this blood goes deeper to the body tissues to minimize overall heat loss from the surface. Okay, again, ha, ang atong target dari is to conserve heat as much as possible. Okay, nga no, the more heat we have, the more we could promote this or the more we could deliver, uh, deliver this heat to the different parts of the body. Sa pinaka sa kailaluman nga tissue or sa kailaluman pa na siya nga organ, aptan man na siya o ka ng heat. We need, uh, the, these organs, these tissues, these muscles need heat for them to function well. Okay, so when the body, uh, if if na if na nisakto nga supply of heat na that is being distributed to the different parts of the body, your body temperature would then increase. Dili ka nang abnormal nga pag-increase, it will increase to the normal body temperature. That's 36 to 37 degrees Celsius. And then the hypothalamus is then triggered to shut down the heat promoting center. Okay, okay, wala naman, na achieve naman nato ang balas at inanglan sa atong lawas. Okay, so that, uh, that's how the body does it. Balik ta ha, pag high temperature gani, ang atong aim ani, ang atong target kay i-release na to ang excess heat. Why do we need uh, to, I mean, why do we have to release the excess heat inside our body? Okay, kung dili mag-overheat, mangguna yung mga cells class, mag-overheat ang yung mga tissues, mag-overheat ang yung mga organs, which is not good for the organism. Okay, so mana, uh, that, that's uh, the target. Uh, as soon as the body detects na the body temperature is higher than the normal. So, if low temperatures po, ang target ani is to promote heat to the different parts of the body. Kibali, ang atong target kay mainitan ang atong lawas, di ba? That's why, kung naamo sa isa ka room na tugnaw kaayo or air corner, for example, if in general, kay, the weather is too cold, what do you do? Di ba? Magbukot ka, mga pe, kay, para mainitan ka. Di ba? Make sense? So, kanasya, that's how the body does it specifically. So, this is just an illustration uh, uh, on how the body regulates on how the body regulates internal temperature. Um, but it's following the, the CISO model, the stimulus response feedback model. It's still the same thing sa akong discussed like two seconds ago lang. But ang, na, ang difference lang ang mga drawings. Okay? So if you could, uh, if you would like to pause this video and then read uh, every single detail, you can. But then, uh, huma naman tag discuss ani. Oh, naraman di ang normal body temperature of 35.8 to 38.2 degrees Celsius. Is that, is that the normal body temperature? But it says here. But anyway, basla kay dila siya mula host og mga 39 siguro or 40 not kay that's already uh indication na ano fever na na siya or yeah it's it's not the normal body temperature. Maybe it would differ no kung asa nga environment. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so uh, yeah. Now, let's proceed to regulation of body fluids. So, I think I was able to give you an introduction of this when we were discussing uh, regulation of fluids, uh, especially excretory system during the uh, organismal biology nga topic. No? So, we'll, we will just try to run through this um, in details as much as we could. Now, kabalo mo nga, when you, when you talk about regulation of body fluids, water plays a very important role with that, okay? Water needs to be regulated inside your body. So, we, you were able to learn nga kung unsa nga amount of water ang inyong ginalose through uh, sweating and through urinating, 
uh, through defecating also um, it should also be relatively the equal amount of water that you are taking in through eating and through drinking okay so it is continually released from your body through sweat and urine again ha dapat balance dili pud pwede nga magsigira kag inom sigira kag inom tapos dili mo gina release because how do you know that your body is cleansing no or you should release that because that's actually waste that's a toxic waste that should be uh, sent out from your body Okay, so di po pwede nga, sige ka, release o release, tapos dili niyo huwag replenish ang tubig na gakawala sa imo. You will feel dehydrated, di ba? So you get the concept. Now, in specific, how or in details, how does the body regulate body fluids? Okay, so we have a diagram here. It's also following the stimulus response feedback model. Though ang mga terms kay different. So number three lang, that's modulator. That's actually the control center. Pero ayaw mo kabalaka, do not overthink everything. Okay? Lahi rabang mo kay pag namoy mag-meet nga term nga lahi sa inyong nastadihan kay mura mong mag-shutdown, mura mong mga brainwash. So kalma lang. Okay? We are going to discuss this in details. Now, ang scenario ani guys is what happens inside your body if dili ka ayaw mo gainom o tubig? Okay? If you don't uh, drink the requirements the required or encouraged amount of uh, glasses of water a day. Okay? If I could ask you, I would, but again, I wala kay expect na to bug. Eh? This is a pre-made video. But uh, we all know that the encouraged amount of water that we should take in in a daily basis is uh, 8 to 10 glasses or 8 to 10 or more glasses of water a day. Okay? And I know some of you here are guilty nga dili na siya gaka-achieve. Lahira ba mukhang inyong tubig kay kape or dili coke or dili milk tea. Diba? Bunga rasad. But anyway, please, please drink water as much as possible. Okay? Uh, water does a lot of wonder in your body. Um, it's a very good moisturizer. If you want to stay hydrated, if you want your skin to look glowing, stay hydrated. Drink water. If you want to be detoxified, if you want to flush out all those toxins inside your body, considering no, nga, kanang, you have been, um, you have not, you have not been um, taking care or taking control of about the food that you eat, no? So, kana, make sure to just drink lots of water. Especially, kana, hili ki mong mga parat plus, kana mga high, um, kana mga food na high kayo content of sodium. So, if you take those kind of food, no, I would ask you to stop. I would ask you to minimalize. Uh, minimalize? <laughs> Sorry, nangawansan naman yung mga terms. I mean, uh, I would ask you to minimize the intake of this kind of food and then, um, Partner that with drinking much water. Okay? Drinking water regularly. Do not overdrink po. Okay? Di po maayo nga masubraan po ng tubig. Okay? That's water intoxication already. Okay? So now, ang scenario ani, balik ta sa scenario. What happens in your body if kulang mo ng tubig? Okay? So the stimulus here, the body would feel that na ay increase in osmotic pressure or your water concentration in plasma decreases. So unsay pasabot ani. Okay, class, your body is not only composed of water, it's not only composed of um, blood in terms of fluid, ha? it's not only composed of uh, mga, you know, mga other forms of liquid, it's also composed of mga dissolved salts and minerals and nutrients all throughout your body. Now, if kulang ang tubig sa imong lawas, ang concentration ani, kani mga dissolved salts, I'm not talking about a literal salt nga asin nga atong gagamito ni na daily basis. Okay, kanang, kanang asin nga gagamito na to sa pagluto. There are many forms of salts in our body. Usually, mga sodium, so, mga sodium, um, sodium bases or kanang chlorine-based uh, salts. Kana, uh, daga na sila klase nga compounds. Uh, that would be, uh, I hope you were able to still remember that from your general chemistry one. But anyway, uh, ang, our body is composed of kanang mga dissolved salts and minerals. So if kulang ang imong lawas, ang concentration ng mga salts and minerals in your body kay molesen. So which is dili na siya maayo sa cell. Okay? Because again, ang cell, lagi na siya gi-require ng sakto nga concentration of these dissolved salts and minerals. Okay? So now, if the body feels that your uh, water concentration decreases, your osmoreceptors in your hypothalamus will then detect that. Okay, ma-detect niya nga, uy, kulang ug water si kanis, kaning si kuan, kanis si Suraida. Okay, so it will then send signals to your brain, to your modulator, or to your control center to release, uh, I, I mean, the osmoreceptors will send signals to your brain 
And then, ang imong brain, yung suguon si posterior lobe of your pituitary gland to release ADH. Okay? ADH is antidiuretic hormone. Okay? So, ang actually, ang function ni um, antidiuretic hormone is to uh, stimulate your drinking behavior. Okay? That's why, di ba, uhawon da yun ka. Okay? So, now, what do you do if uhawon ka? Muinam mo tubig, di ba? So, ang naka-amazing nga na class, wala pa ka nag-inom mo tubig, ma-feel na nasa lawas nga kanang kuan kanang itasudo its uh, necessary preparations so how does the body prepare before pa ka mabu ma ma before pa nimo mabuhat ang response okay so we have here the effector um kibali unsa nga organ ang gasuguon sa brain to do the particular response so uh, one of the effector organs is your kidney your kidney tubules will become more permeable to water so pasabot ana class mura gina ready na niya iyang self to receive water kidili man pud pwedeng kalit-kalito na nimo na siya Okay, ina ina na ka amazing ang atong body class. Like kana nasley own system nagakaita bu sa insights in which we are not aware of in most cases. Pero it's happening inside. Okay, wala ang naka amazing ana asa atong lawas. So as soon as your kidney tubules become more permeable to water, it will then stimulate your drinking behavior. So of course, if you feel thirsty, mo nang kaya nga, kuhawan ko kasi mong bato, mong inom ka, di ba? So, uh, if, maka, if madugangan na ang water sa imong lawas, um, hinahinay na dahil would decrease ang imong osmotic pressure until such time, ma-achieve na niya ang sakto nga concentration nga kinanglan sa imong lawas or kinanglan sa imong mga cells. Okay? So, muna siya. Okay, I would like to share this analogy para mas dali ninyo siya masabutan, pero, um, um, ano lang, kanang, buro lang siya, ano, class ba? Kanang, kung mag-inom bitaw mo ka ng powder juice bitaw, di ba you'll know nga if it's very, very concentrated, kay, um, ispiso ka, um, you'll know nga ispiso ka ayo siya, or concentrated, if tamisra ka ayo siya, di ba? So, kamo, kung ganahan kayo, kung tamisra sad ka ayo, I mean, good for you. But, I think most of us would prefer nga sakto lang ang timpla, di ba? So, what do you do para masakto ang timpla, para ma-less ang concentration? Di ba, dugangan ni mo tubig until ma-achieve na nimo ang you know ang concentration na imong gusto or ideal para sa imo so it's it's somewhat like that class okay always kita mo balik sa concept na dili pwede ang sobra dili pwede ang kulang dapat sakto lang kaya nga homeostasis di ba balance as soon as the body detects kana changes that disrupts the balance inside our system maningkamot gina siya nga mo balik siya sa equilibrium or sa balance Yeah, yeah. I think I'm. I I was able to tell you what I'm trying to say here, or you know, my thoughts. Okay, so let's proceed to regulation of gas concentration. This is very very basic. Kabalo na mo. Why do I keep saying very very? My God, this is basic. You already know this. Ah, that the two most important gases in the body is oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, so ah, these are two important gases that must have a normal concentration inside the body. So again, dili pwede sobra nga oxygen, dili pud pwede nga kulang nga oxygen. Dili pud pwede nga sobra ang carbon dioxide, dili pud pwede nga kulang ang carbon dioxide. Alam ma'am, nadi ti carbon dioxide sa lawas. Sabi ko ba gina-release na siya through respiration. Excess amounts of carbon dioxide has to be released outside the body. Okay? But yeah, we still uh, our, our cells also need carbon dioxide, pero in minimum amounts. Now, you already know this. These are the functions of the respiratory system. Ato na niya na discuss the gas exchange sa organismo biology ng part. So, aside from maintaining the concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide, it also it also it also makes sure that the pH level inside your body is also controlled or maintained. Okay, kaya ang body class. Medyo artihan pa dang atong lawas, no? Pero again, you cannot really complain because it does so much for you. Most of the time, you just don't notice it. You don't even give importance to it at at times, de ba? I'm not trying to throw shade here, but that's actually one of the sad reality, no? Ang mga tao kay, I mean, me, I mean, apil ko in some in some instances kay magakapasagdana na ako ng health, kakapasagdana na ako ng lawas. I'm I'm even abusing it, no, to the extent ng mura gulatan na lang siguro na ako ng kalit na ako mo shut down. In which, as I grow older, I realize, dili dapat. Okay, your body does so much for us. So I want you to be reminded, no, through this lesson, na please, please take care of your body, take care of your health. Mau mau ragi dang ato mga puunan, puunan, especially us kita young, young people. 
chart lang. Okay, so, um, what I was saying is, ang body kay medyo RTO siya, kay na siya ginarequire nga, sakto nga pH level, okay? Kay dili pwede nga taas ra pud kayo, dili pud pwede nga lower ra pud kayo kay uh, naay naay gi maintain nga pH level sa imong lawas kay mo man na nga sakto nga amount kung asa maka-function og taro nga imong mga cells, imong mga organs, imong mga tissues, so on and so forth. Okay? So, uh, kabalo na mo ani to respiration, the human body needs oxygen and then we release carbon dioxide. Okay? So, ang plants, bali, ilahan, no? They take in carbon dioxide and then they release oxygen through photosynthesis. So, you also know this, that the cells inside your lungs, especially, especially no, inside your air sacs or your alveoli, sila ang process sa gas exchange within your respiratory system. Okay? So, and then the oxygen will then be uh, released or will be sent to the different parts of your body, your organs, your tissues, your muscles, through your bloodstream. That's why the blood uh, does not only carry nutrients all throughout your body, but it, they also uh, carry oxygen all throughout your body. Okay, um, I will be uh, encouraging you to watch Cells at Work. Uh, it's an anime, so if you have time, if kind of extra time rather, or dahon sa gininugan sa inyo mga lesson packets, no, gino mga modules. If you have time, you can watch it. It's very educational. I actually salute the maker or the you know the the makers behind this anime kay very creative ang ilang pagka-portray on how the body does everything. Okay? It's actually really amazing. Now, oxygen is important for cellular respiration since it maintains homeostasis. Kabalo na mo ani. Okay? So, aside from oxygen, carbon dioxide should also be um, maintained inside the body. So, it says here, no, insufficient amount of carbon dioxide could accumulate problematic levels. Uh, uh, if na disturbances sa amount of carbon dioxide in your blood stream or sa inyong lawas, there would, it will also affect uh, the pH level in your body. So, again, if na ay ka ng changes sa pH level sa inyong lawas, dili makatangog function ng imong mga cells, imong mga organs. Okay, that's what I have been saying earlier. Okay, so this is just an illustration of the alveolus or the air sacs inside your lungs. No, uh, This is where the gas exchange happens. Okay, I think we are already on the... What is this? Fourth one, we are almost done. Uh, this is regulation of blood pressure. So blood pressure is defined as the pressure exerted by the blood against the walls of the blood vessels. So we all know that your blood or our blood is confined within our blood vessels, our veins, capillaries, our arteries. And then, of course, they are constantly being transported to the different parts of your body. They are constantly moving. Okay? So, of course, with the movement, na pressure nga ka exert within the blood vessel walls. Okay? We call that blood pressure. So, of course, na ay ginamintain na sakto nga blood pressure inside your body. That's why dili maayo ang high blood pressure, di ba? Di pun maayo ang low blood, ang low blood pressure. Rather, sorry. So, uh, blood pressure keeps the blood flowing through all the blood vessels so that cells receive oxygen and nutrients, which are important components needed to sustain life. We all know this already. So, how do you know that your blood vessels are healthy if they are elastic? Okay? So, how do you know elastic siya? It could recoil, it could uh, stretch easily. I mean, naiwali problem sa pag-recoil o pag-stretch, maskin ka change change ang pressure. Okay? So, uh, you all know this, no, nga, kanang, usually, usay, ma, usay tendencies, pag ang isa ka tao, kay high ra kayo yung blood pressure. Di ba, usually, kay, kana, hypertension, stroke, di ba? Kana. So, if the blood pressure rise is too high, it could damage the blood vessels. Imagine na daw, kusog ka yung flow sa imong blood, that your blood vessels could not take it. So, na tendency nga, pwede mag, uh, kuan, you can, uh, your blood vessels will be torn off. That's, uh, that's what happens actually during kana mga patients na gaka-stroke, ipaspas ra kayo ang flow sa blood, too much ang um, blood pressure, high ra kayo ang blood pressure mo na ang iyang ugat, dili niya makuntay, nakapaspas sa flow sa dugor ka, kakusog sa pressure mo na mubuto siya. Okay? So, bleeding na dayo na may itabuan na. So, di po na yung lower ka yung blood pressure. Of course, kay, um, that, that pressure is needed para matransport ang oxygen and nutrients to the different parts of your body. So, if blood pressure is too low, your organs would not be able to receive adequate amounts of oxygen and nutrients all throughout your body. 
Okay, these are just terms that I would like you to be introduced to, no? Uh, uh, I mean, anyways, it's not really that important, but um, I just want you to be introduced to these terms. When, uh, when you say vasodilation, it refers to your blood vessels that are dilating. Okay, when you say vasoconstriction, this, refer, uh, this refers to your blood vessels constricting. Okay, so... Yeah, kibali makita ninyo nga unsay diferensa isa ka blood vessel nga ga dilate or ga constrict. Kay di ba when you say dilate gani mo expand. So as you can see in this uh, part of the diagram here, uh, murag nitambok ang blood vessels, okay? And then di ba na mention ako before nga uh, if your blood vessels dilate, pas 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 ang flow sa blood. Kung mas pas pas ang flow sa blood, mas pas pas po ang pag-release or pag sa heat outside your skin. Okay, that's actually one of the responses on how the body regulates high, if, on how the body regulates body temperature or temperature, internal temperature. And then when you say vasoconstriction, mo constrict tangi mo mga blood vessels. So as you can see, ninipis siya. Okay, ni constrict man, ni gamay man ang iyang uh, opening. Okay, so uh, pag gamay gani ang opening sa blood vessels, muhinay po ang flow sa blood. Okay? Kung mas hinay ang flow sa blood, uh, your, the heat within the blood or within your body will then be conserved properly to be, uh, to be delivered or promoted to the different parts of your body. Okay, I think we are already on the last part of the lesson. This is regulation of glucose concentration. So, if you could remember in your biology 1, no, gen bio 1, there are four main types of biological macromolecules. And then one of these macromolecules play an important role in providing energy or fuel for the body. We call them carbohydrates. Okay? So, there are many types of carbohydrates depending on pila ka boka, uh, sugar units ang naa sa ila. For example, we have monosaccharide, so it's composed of single, uh, I mean, single sugar unit. If uh, disaccharides kay duha, if polysaccharides kay ten or more, if uh, like mga ten lang kabo or very few, that's oligosaccharides. Okay, so that's regulation. Uh, th those are carbohydrates. When we talk about carbohydrates, uh, one of the examples of monosaccharides kay glucose. Okay, mong itawag na sila nga monosaccharides class because these are the simplest forms of sugar. Nganong simple man. Kimo man is sila ang pinaka dali maabsorb sa cells. So you could, it's safe to say that glucose is actually a small type of sugar. Okay, kaya nga simple sugar, di ba? So, glucose is an important sugar in the body. By the way, how do we ob obtain sugars inside our body? By eating food rich in carbohydrates. Okay? So, um, it produces energy necessary to perform certain physiological processes. So, of course, just like any other factors inside our body, glucose should also be regulated. Because if it's too much or if it's too less, it might result in complications. Okay? Uh, in worst case scenario, it could result in brain damage and loss of consciousness. Or even death. Okay? So, I would like you to be introduced to these two very important hormones that uh, play um, a big role in, con in concentrating, in regulating glucose concentration inside your body. So, we have insulin here and glucagon. Okay? Um, actually, opposite ang ilang mga functions. Um, yeah, opposite ang ilang mga roles sa, uh, when, uh, when it comes to glucose concentration. So, when I talk about insulin, it's a hormone that decreases glucose level in the bloodstream. Okay? Again, decrease. It facilitates glucose transport into the cells by decreasing glucose level in the bloodstream. Si glucagon, opposite ang yung function. Okay? Gina-increase niya or gina-raise niya si blood glucose level. Now, you might be confused, no nga? Ma'am, why does the body have to increase and decrease blood glucose level? Okay, again, we have to achieve the normal glucose concentration in the body. Kina ay gina-require ang lawas na sakto nga glucose concentration kaya para maka-function ng taro ng ima mga cells, mga tissues, and mga organs. Okay? So, what happens if the body detects nga? Okay, I have here a diagram, no? Um, uh, it's, it, it simplifies on how the body regulates uh, glucose concentration. Uh, eh, sorry. On how the body regulates glucose concentration inside your body, in your system. So, as you can see on the middle part here, mo ni gitawag na glucose norm. So, pasabutan na, mo ni ang balance. Kibali mo ni ang sakto nga concentration of glucose in the body. So, what happens if madetect, madetect, <laughs> now, so what happens if madetect sa lawas nga, uh, 
the glucose concentration is higher than the normal. So, how does that happen? If you take too much carbohydrates, okay, take note of that, guys. Please limit your food intake, especially. I mean, not really limit. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, ayun ninyo pa sobrae ang inyong pagkaon ng mga food na very high in carbohydrates. Nga kanang bitong kanang out of control na ginag amount. I know, I appreciate, I I recognize that we are Filipinos. I am a Filipino, and then rice is a very staple crop here in the country. So makarice git ang mga tao, no? So ano? My point lang yun is just control. Okay, kana lang. And then, uh, sige, what happens if the body detects uh, too much ang glucose concentration than the normal? So, uh, your pancreas will be commanded or, you know, requested by the brain to, uh, kuan, to, you know, produce insulin, your pancreas and your liver. Okay? So, pag mag-produce tayo ng insulin, your insulin will lower down glucose concentration until such time ma-reach ni mo ang regular no concentration na required sa body. Okay? So, what happens if the body detects nga kulang ra kayo ang glucose concentration inside your body? How does that happen? If, kana, if wala puti ka undyod, or again, uh, kana bitong paan, kanang, kanang, there's this diet we call, uh, they call it low carb. Um, I mean, yeah, it's effective for some people, but again, make sure that you're able to, uh, you know, to give the required amounts of kanang nutrients na gi-require sa imong lawas. I hope that makes sense. Okay? So, kana, uh, what happens if the body detects nga lower na kayo ang glucose concentration than the normal? So, that will be detected by the kuan, uh, body, and then you, uh, it will then send signals to your brain, and then your brain will send signals to your pancreas na, uy, ka na na detect na detect na tong lower ang glucose concentration. And then, your pancreas and your liver will secrete uh, glucagon. Okay? So, again, di ba, ang function ni glucagon, gina-release niya, or gina-release, I'm sorry, gina-increase niya, or gina-raise niya blood sugar level. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, gina increase niya ang blood sugar level until such time ma-reach na niya ang glucose norm or ang normal ng glucose concentration inside your body. Okay? That's why class no, kana if there are times na kanang makaskip mo of meals, dili man nga mamatay mo na diretso. Okay? Kay ang imong magong lawas class, uh, naa na siya capability to kana conserve um, energy and then wala gina hipos na nila, gina gina ginatago na nila no gina reserve na nila kay if in times nga you're not able to you know to replenish your body with this uh, requirements dili ka diretso ma mamatay ana kay ang lawas na siya capability or ability nga mag-release og kanang amounts of energy para still maka-function pagyapon ka so that's basically the same concept no if ma-detect sa lawas na kulang ang imong glucose concentration your liver will secrete glucagon and then your glucagon will uh, kuan will initiate the breakdown of glycogen. This glycogen class, these are more like packets of kanang reserve nga, kanang glucose, uh, you know, glucose molecules inside your body or inside your cells. So, pag ma-release na siya, of course, gina-try niyo increase ang iyong glucose concentration until such time ma-reach na niyo ang regular na glucose concentration required by your body. Okay? Yeah, we're done. We're actually done. So, um, if you have uh, further questions, you can watch the. If wala mo kasabot, you can watch the video again. If uh, wala pagin mo kasabot, if you have further questions, please, please do not hesitate to contact me. Okay. Again, not during um, break hours. Uh, you can only contact me through. I mean, during um, office hours. That's seven thirty to five p.m. Okay, so, so have a great day ahead and thank you. Salamu alaikum.